Welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're talking about one of the big projects. Remember I mentioned there's going to be a spurt of some uh, videos coming your way with big projects, some exciting things. Today's one of them. So this is eight months in the making. Uh, it's the Turbo Direct Soil Adapter which is now finalized and it started off as a, a 3D print which most of our designs start off whether it's a turbine housing or a billet compressor or whatever the case is and uh, we started off as a 3D print which then uh, had a couple of features added to it. We did a bit of flow analysis and simulation and uh, we printed the core of the actual unit itself. And then we went into uh, making a mold, uh, a one-off mold, so we could make a casting. And we got something that looked like that, which is obviously not a final product. And uh, it had quite a lot of flaws, uh, which we obviously figured out, we ironed out, and uh, we started coming toward a better product which is another single mold made from a 3d print once again which we then machined we verified sizes and finally we machined our own mold and went into production with an investment cost sword adapter which now looks like this so i'll zoom in and i'll give you guys some close-up pictures of this shortly but what i want to do is i want to go over some of the design features and aspects of the actual product why we designed it uh, why it's taken us so long and what benefits you can have and see and experience on your G7R or Audi S3, any E888 engine which will basically go and bolt onto uh, an IS38, IS20 type flange face and obviously then uh, get reduced to a V-band connection, 76mm V-band connection, uh, 3 inch, um, which will basically couple up together to any of the V-band turbocharger or turbine housings from your Garrett, GTX, G-Series, EFR, etc, etc. So, what I want to basically do is just give you the, the basis and the, uh, the actual projection of what we try to achieve. The sword adapter is designed to take whatever flow the head will pass through uh, on the EA888 engine and basically create a vortex increase the velocity and the Mach speed of the actual air coming out of the head into the swirl adapter and then out of the out of the swirl adapter we like to see an increase in both pressure as well as the air speed so we can create uh, the basis and the foundation for the entry into a turbine housing um, and obviously that will the, the idea behind this is to create a benefit or a, 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 um, an improvement in spool characteristics of turbochargers using slightly larger AR turbine housing. So, so if you look at the EFR7163, you, you get the T4 twin scroll turbine housing option, which is an AR80, and then you get the V-band and T25 flange faces, also in the 7163, which are AR85, slightly larger turbine housing by a smidgen. However, the most popular used is the twin scroll because the fallacy, and it is a fallacy, surrounding the fact that the twin scroll, because it's twin scroll, spools a turbocharger faster is actually not true on this specific engine anyway. The reason that the twin scroll EFR turbine housing spools faster over, over and above the V-band and the T25 flange is because the AR is smaller, not because it's twin scroll. So what we've done is we've conducted tests with the swirl adapter after we had gone into simulation um, which you'll see video, uh, a short video, an excerpt of just now. And we have bolted on a V-band AR85 turbine housing on a 7163 and found it to spool the same, if not better, than a slightly smaller AR80 twin scroll turbine housing. However, the benefit is, up top, the V-band housing with a larger AR holds the power for slightly longer and it lifts the torque curve up. So you get the best of both worlds by using the swirl adapter. Let's move on to some of the uh, close-up pictures and then I will end off with some of the simulation that we've gone and done and uh, we'll sign off from there. I hope you guys like this one. It's uh, quite a detailed one, it's quite a technical one. We're not going to delve into too much of the technical detail on this. However, I hope you like the result, the finished product. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Let's hear what you guys have to say. See you next time. a little bit of 
simulation on the swirl adapter with flow trajectories uh, just to see exactly what's happening. And, uh, there's one or two small little eddies that are created and reverse flow directions where we find um, occurring like you'll see there. Uh, the reason for that is because there's no cylinder head attached and there's no turbine housing attached to the other end. Uh, we've done um, some flow analysis and uh, some point parameters, surf uh, surface uh, plots and ISO surfaces and cut plots which I'll show you where we find that um, as soon as we extrude the surface here the trajectories and the eddies disappear. So uh, this is just trajectories and plots done on the swirl adapter on its own inside of the boundaries contained inside of this box. So what we're looking for here is essentially those hot spots. Now, what we're looking at is velocity. Those hot spots are essentially the high speed areas. And there's two points of high speed that we are looking for. And that is on this section of the outlet and that section of the inlet of the swirl adapter. And by doing so, we actually create that swirl. So there's a high velocity area and there's a high velocity area in the opposite port. So they are opposite from one another, which is exactly the, des the, the intended design. We have some ISO surfaces as well indicating pressure. And uh, you will see very similar information, high pressure, high pressure. And that is essentially what creates your swirl through this, this device or this adapter. And then we have a particle study, which is really interesting and once again if you look at the velocity you'll actually see that this swirl is created by those particles which is exactly what we're looking for This is the first revision of the swirl adapter. Remember this casting is not a final product. This was made from a 3D print and it was there specifically for various checks, dimensional, angle, etc. And then we made a couple of changes. Uh, the most noticeable one will be where the outlet onto version number two comes up flush with the mounting face, which is obviously V-band. So this was number two, which was CNC machined, and obviously uh, there was a bit of shrinkage, that's why there's no material here. But be that as it may, this then fell away, and we now have the final product, which is an investment cost piece and uh, it is basically finalized. And you'll actually see that this face over here is raised. So it locates onto your V-band turbine housing. And uh, you will notice that the material is obviously cast in a way that it mates 100% to the gasket face, the PCD, and 
these ports over here, mate to the head. If a customer does uh, use one of these of uh, one of these adapters, one of our swirl adapters, they need to let us know if they've flowed the head. If they have and they've port matched the head to the gasket face opening, like you'd see in some of our other videos, we will then CNC profile this to the same size so that we've got a port matched uh, um, result.